Well, friends, we just returned from our summer vacation and I learned five very important lessons about minimalism after a week of, well, tiny living. And let me tell you, friends, close quarters will give you a whole lot of perspective on a whole lot of things. So come along with me as we pack our camper, get ready for vacation. I will share my five hindsights 2020 lessons with you and share a little bit of our vacation time because we had a ton of fun. Well, hello friends, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. And yes, a few weeks out of the year, our family gets out of our regular routine and spends a week or sometimes more in our travel trailer on vacation. It's kind of like having our own little tiny home. Let's get right into these lessons. Lesson number one, the size of your space doesn't actually matter all that much. Let's compare our camper to our home. Our camper is 296 square feet. It has two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a pretty much open concept like living room, dinette, kitchen situation. Pretty much everything that we need to do throughout the day, aside from sleep, happens in one very small space. It has good storage, but it's mostly limited, and it's just kind of an overall small space. Our house is 2,960 square feet. Our camper is exactly 10% of the square footage of our home, which made this lesson sting just a little bit more. Our home has five bedrooms, three bathrooms, an open concept living room, kitchen, and eating area, and then we have a formal dining room, a dedicated laundry room, and an office. And before all the haters want to blast me in the comments about having a home that is a little more maximalist than minimalist, see my previous video. But I digress. Let's get to the lesson. The size of your space really doesn't matter all that much. Humans are kind of like goldfish when it comes to our space. We are going to grow to fit the available space. Yes, we are not all going to be busting at the seams, but I think we can all agree that we know when a space feels too full or too empty. And if it feels too empty, we're usually going to put something there. Now, we don't take a whole lot of stuff with us because we don't have a whole lot of room to work with, but our countertops still get cluttered up. The shoes can sometimes be all over the place. The toys can get kind of spread out and things don't always seem to have a permanent home. We do really have to be mindful of how we use the space in our camper, but the same thing is true in our home. It's really not about the size of the space, it's more about how you manage it. Lesson number two, dishes require maintenance. Seems kind of obvious, but this is an area that we sometimes treat our home a little differently than we would a tiny home or a camper. Whether I hand wash them or use a dishwasher, I still have to do the dishes. And this is pretty true of just about any other thing in our home. Now, I'm not going back on any of the things that I have said in the past about living with less. Having few clothes and dishes, toys, hobby items will change the amount of time that you spend maintaining all of them. And it will force you into getting into some of those regular habits of maintenance in your home and in your tiny home. Before minimalism in our home, my kids had enough stuff to go two if not three weeks between doing their laundry which meant I could actually put it off for quite a while. And I also had quite a bit of laundry to do when I did do laundry. I'd put it off, I'd get overwhelmed, and I'd feel like a failure. The same thing happened with dishes. I felt like it would take me hours to get through them. And so I would get overwhelmed and I would put them off as long as possible. And because we had so many dishes to dirty up before I was forced to wash them, that pile could actually get quite large, which again, made me feel overwhelmed 
and like a failure. Hello. Do you want to, oh, you want to join me? You're trying to give kisses, but it looks more like just head button me. You good boy? Go lay down. When it comes to our camper, the same thing goes. A low inventory really does make it easier for me to manage. It forces me to do regular maintenance in small increments. That changes everything, whether we are in a home or a tiny home. Don't, don't let me get in your way. You good? You good? Okay. Lesson number three. I can live with far less than I have. Granted, we don't do all of the same things that we do when we're camping at home and vice versa. But for the most part, I can live pretty comfortably with far fewer throw blankets and decorative pillows, a few less hobby items and kitchen appliances, and I still cook pretty good meals. I have fewer outfits, and just in general, fewer things to manage. In fact, I can go an entire week without actually thinking about any of my sentimental items. Of course, all of these things enhance our lives, right? We enjoy them. They can improve the quality of our lives. But I am certainly reminded of what truly matters when I have these times of living with far less than what I typically have. Lesson number four, I can live with far more than what I have. I know, I know, I just said the opposite. This is kind of like a proverb, you know, where they're both true in certain circumstances. Let me explain. I enjoy my home. I enjoy the spaces. I enjoy the way that it is broken up. But something happens when we're in our homes day to day. Clutter fades into the background. It just becomes part of the normal landscape of our homes, and often it can make our spaces feel much smaller than they actually are. When we are gone and come home with fresh eyes, I can see my space a little differently than I have before I left. I can actually see the clutter, and yes, it can be somewhat frustrating. I don't wanna be faced with all of the wrong decisions that I've made or the stuff that I didn't clean up or any of the negative aspects of it. I do recognize that, but there is something about coming in and being able to see the things that you couldn't see before you left. It actually helps you find a solution for some of the feelings of anxiety and stress and overwhelm that you may be feeling, but don't always understand why. Being able to see all of that stuff that's kind of piled up and laying around really gives me a better perspective on where I need to go next. It gives me direction, which brings me to my fifth lesson. I have got a long way to go. With all of the family crisis that we have experienced over the last year now, decluttering, general maintenance, and many other things has just kind of gotten away from me, and it shows. It's really opened my eyes to how far we have regressed in this journey toward minimalism. And don't get me wrong, we're nowhere near where we were three years ago with all of the stuff that we had. I still am living with far less than what we had and we're much happier. But I definitely have my work cut out for me and I gained a new perspective on how this kind of all got away from me in the first place. We're gonna talk about that in an upcoming video. So if you haven't subscribed already, I mean, this might be a good time to do it. And don't worry, like we can keep this totally low key. I won't tell anyone that you actually subscribed. Now on to the good stuff, because my friends, we had a fantastic time in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. This year we stayed at Camp Margaritaville in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We spent some time at the Old Mill District, by the way, they have the best restaurant, I think, in Pigeon Forge down there. If you like good country cooking, my husband got the liver and onions, which I will be honest, as a full-fledged born and bred Yankee, I will not be cooking. But he enjoyed them. 
And this was such a fun place for the kids to see like blacksmithing stuff that is not necessarily my cup of tea, but as like rugged outdoors kids, they were all about it. <laughs> We also did another super fun thing, and I am about to show you exactly what that was. So as a special treat, we rented a UTV for the day to go around Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, and we're going to do the Rocky Ford, I'll, I'll put the right name in the description, but it's a motorway, and we're just going to try and have some good fun. Scissors. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Beth could have sewn back on there. Yeah, yeah Mary Beth sewn right back yeah, on. I brought I mean, my. She might put the left one on the right side, the right one on the left side. That's okay. I brought my needle and thread. <laughs> I never leave home without it. You just never know when you're going to have to sew some sleeves on. So beautiful.
following day, we explored the national park a little more. We went over into Cherokee, North Carolina, and were able to see some elk there. At the base of the mountain is a farm museum just outside of Cherokee, and that was too really, really cool. It gave us a glimpse into what farm life would have been like in that area during the 1800s. We also stopped by Newfound Gap, which was really cool, just beautiful views. The Appalachian Trail has a section there. And so it was a lot of fun to be that high up on the mountain and get those spectacular views. Of course, we had our favorite low country boil. This has kind of become somewhat of a tradition for us. And the kids enjoyed the pool, the arcade, and of course, riding their bikes and playing on the playground. This trip is one of my favorite vacations that we do all year. Our kids play really well together, our husbands get along well, and we usually find some really fun things to do. I feel like my kids are building lifelong memories on these summer vacations, and honestly, I'd probably camp in a tent in the dead of summer just so we could all spend time together. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see some of the footage from our vacation last year and my candid conversation with pretty much my favorite person on the planet, you can click the link right up here. Thanks so much for watching. And until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight.